So this is another version of the short run analysis of the impact of price changes on the real returns to uh, factors in an economy. So once again, short run is when we have mobile uh, labor and capital that's immobile between sectors. So labor can move back and forth between industries, between firms, searching out higher wages, but capital can move between firms, but not across industries because of some specific feature of the capital, uh, the machinery that can't be used in the other sector. So we're going to be analyzing a situation where the price of X rises and the price of Y stays the same. Now, in a separate video, we've taken a look at how you can depict the various returns to labor and capital using this graph. And if so we've got the wage in Y, which is measured along this axis. This is the original wage in Y. This is the original wage in X. And we start out with the wages equal because we're assuming that you know, labor can move back and forth uh, between the industries. And this triangle is the payments to capital in Y. This triangle is the payments to capital in X. This distance is the the number of workers employed in the Y sector, this is the number of workers employed in the X sector, and this horizontal axis is the total number of workers in the economy. Okay, so if the price of X goes up, then what we're going to have is a proportional shift up of the uh, uh, demand curve for labor, which is this value of marginal product of labor curve. So it's proportional. That's, that's, that's actually really important. So it's a, if, if the price rise of X is 10%, it, it's going to be 10% here. It's going to be 10% here. So the, the, the shift is not parallel. It's proportional. So what we have here is that the demand curve for labor is going to rotate up, if you will, and this is going to be the new price of X times various marginal productivities of labor of X, and so that, that shifts up uh, proportionally. And what we're looking for in the short-run equilibrium is where the wage in the two sectors now equal each other. So what we have is that the wage in the short run in X is equal to the wage in the short run in Y. So the wage goes up and what we have is that workers are going to move into the X sector, because the wage went up, the, the demand for, for labor went up in the X sector, that's drawing workers from Y into X. So let's, let's look at how the wage in X rise, or the wage rises relative to the price rise. So if the labor amount stayed the same, okay, this distance, this vertical distance, is the, the change in the price. We talked about that earlier. It's the proportional change in the price. But the wage in X rises by less than that. So the wage goes up, but by less than the increase in the price of X. So the wage, the percentage change... And the price of X exceeds the percentage change in the wage. Now, of course, that is greater than the percentage change in Y because it, ha it, didn't, it didn't change at all by, by assumption. So what we have here is that by labor moving from one sector into the other, from the uh, contr uh, the contracting sector into the expanding sector, the wage goes up, but by less 
than the price rise in X. Workers in the X sector can buy less X, but more Y. So their real income, their the real returns to labor, the standard of living, their purchasing power, however you want to describe that, the impact is ambiguous because it depends on whether they mainly consume Y or mainly consume X or some combination. The more they buy of X, the less likely they are to see an increase in their real income. It really does depend on their uh, their purchasing uh, patterns. Okay, so let's let's look at the um, uh, payments to capital. First, let's look at the payments to capital in Y. As you recall, this box was the nominal return to capital, or not that box, that triangle, was the nominal return to capital in sector uh, Y before the price change. Because labor has left and gone seeking the higher wages in the X sector, labor moves, and what you have is a drop in the payments to capital to this triangle. So, if you will, the payments to capital in the Y sector fall by B, C, D. That's the, the, the payments to capital is shrunk because labor has left. So, if you're a capital owner in this sector, you see an absolute drop in your income. You can buy less of the imported or the, the good whose price went up, of course. I mean, because this price went up and you had a, a drop in your income, you could buy less, less X. But because your income has dropped, you can also buy less Y. So, regardless of what the capital owners purchase, they see a reduction in their income if they're in sector Y. Now, in the X sector for capital, their income originally was this blue triangle, as discussed before. It is now to use, to use a different color. It is now this black area. It turns out because the uh, labor has come in, let me do, do it this way, the price of X went up, and as workers have come in to the X sector, that pushes up the marginal productivity of capital. In other words, the payments to R, the payments to capital in, in the sector, is now big, uh, proportionally bigger than it was before. So this black triangle is proportionally bigger uh, than the price rise in X. Now, what does that mean? That means that capital owners in sector X can buy more X, even though the price went up, and they can certainly buy more of the good whose price remained the same. So let's, let's summarize this. In the short run, the economic interests of the different groups depends very much on their mobility and where they are located. For capital owners that are stuck in the, in the industry that is expanding, X, they unambiguously are better off. The capital owners in that sector, if they remain in the sector, can't leave, they are going to definitely benefit from any increase in the price of X. They're going to be able to buy more X, and they're going to be able to buy more Y. Capital owners in Y, exactly the opposite. Those capital owners can buy less of X and less of Y. So they're unambiguously worse off. So, you know, bottom line is if, you're, if you can't move, your interests are tied to the industry that, where, you're, where you're located. If that industry is expanding, you do well. If that industry is contracting, you're really hit hard. Labor, on the other hand, the impact for them 
is ambiguous. It depends on their uh, consumption patterns of those, of those workers. The more they buy of the good uh, whose price went up, the less likely they are to be made better off. The more they buy the other good, the more likely they, are, uh, they will be better off. So this is the a graphical version of the short run, uh, and there's an uh, accompanying uh, video that talks about this from a, uh, more of, a, of, a, of an equation form. Both of these are, are uh, ways to uh, do this uh, analysis. but get the same result either way you do it.